It's time for Magician 101, the show for all magicians. I love answering your questions each week. It's such a fun show to do, so keep posting your questions down below, and uh, we'll get to today's uh, questions in a moment, but I want to talk about a contest. I was thinking next year in 2014, which is coming up very, very soon, uh, 2013 is getting ready to end soon, I was thinking about having a magic contest, sort of like Magic Geek's Digital Magician of the Year contest they had a few years ago, where you would post a video of you doing a magic trick, Best performance gets first place, second best gets uh, second place, third best gets third place. I was thinking about doing something like that. And the prizes would be actual magic tricks. Like I would actually, <coughs> excuse me, wow, I don't know why I just coughed there. Uh, I would actually um, give away magic tricks. First place would be a really awesome magic trick. Can't tell you which one. I already have some ideas about what the tricks would be. Uh, but, the, but each... The top three prizes would be really, really good. So, uh, but the thing is, I don't want to get just like two or three uh, submissions for the contest. I actually want to get like, for, for this contest for me to actually do it, I'd like to get at least 10 or 11 videos. So, when you post your questions for next week, also say if you would uh, do this contest or not. If you, would, if you would submit a video for it. And if a lot of people say they're going to do it, like at least 11 people say that, I'm sorry, at least 10 people say they're going to do it, then I might seriously go forward with this contest. But I'll have to give a little more thought to it. But definitely post if you think you're going to be part of the contest or not. All right, let's get to this week's questions. First is from Matthew Bringle. How long have you done magic? Well, I'm so glad you asked this question because coming up at the end of the, mo at the, end of the month, or I think it's the beginning of next month, I can't remember the exact date, it would be my seven-year anniversary doing magic. So I'm really, really excited. I've loved every moment doing magic. It's been so much fun, especially to perform for people and see the smiles on their faces when I do my magic. So it's a lot of fun. All right, Mr. Tadpole221 says, I know this is a lot to ask, but could you sometimes do a full, sh uh, thirty maybe 30-minute 30 street show? I know it's a lot to ask, but it would be fantastic. If not, thanks anyways. Great video. Um, Matthew, I'm not sure if I want to do this or not. This is going to be one of those videos where when I feel like doing it, I'll do it. But if I don't feel like doing it, I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. So the only thing I can say to you is keep watching my channel. You, may, you might see the video one day. You never know. All right. Mary Sue says, I've got another question. I was thinking of getting a change bag from Magic Geek, but I'm not sure if I should really get the jumbo one because it's almost 50 bucks more than the small one. All right, now the Magic Geek jumbo one is for is about $110, and your standard one, like this guy, is uh, $32.99, I think it is, or $34.99, something like that. Um, I do want to say that I've had this guy for seven years since I started doing Magic, and this guy has never let me down. I actually replaced this guy a couple times in my show with a zipper uh, style change bag. The company I bought it from, though, wasn't from Magic Geek. It was from another company who had these, uh, had zippered ones for like seven bucks. They were on sale for cheap. I bought some. They were terrible quality. The zipper broke on it. I, I And I wasn't like really trying to unzip it hard. I was zipping it unlightly and just broke. The zipper came off. And the, the secret uh, changing action inside the bag uh, broke as well and wouldn't change so I'm like really so I, this guy had never let me down though it's been a great little change bag for the seven years this is the standard version now I'm not sure Mary what you're going to use your change bag for if you're going to use it for big items such as this guy this guy won't even fit on the uh, camera I don't think it's so big this is the uh, big peacock silk this would be better in a large change bag uh, I don't know if you could use an animal in a large change bag. I guess if you put them right in there before you do your change bag routine, you might be able to use a large animal maybe, but I don't think you'd probably be able to. If you're going to do the change bag for standard things like the mismade flag, where you take the flag, you put red, white, and blue in, and it, you can see my Magic Challenge video. It was the 4th of July video where I did this trick. Um, you could see the review on this trick. But anyways... Um, if you're doing something standard like this, a standard change bag works just fine. You don't need a big, large jumbo stage bag, change bag. I don't even know what you use a jumbo one for besides like a giant silk or something. I don't even know. Uh, but definitely go with a standard one. And this one, if you go to Magic Geek in their search box and type in change bag, it's just put in 
change bag. Nothing else. Just put in change bag. It's the very first search result. This guy. Uh, it's a different color though. It's a red bag with a blue little pom pom on the bottom. So, uh, but it's the the standard ones. This guy is great. So I love these. So I say with the go with the standard one, unless you're going to do it, unless you're going to use it for something big like a big silk, then go for a uh, that don't even. Get, you know what? Even a big one fits inside of a standard change bag. So just go with the standard one. I don't, I don't even know what you use a large one for. This might, the, the giant peacock silk might fit better in a large change bag, but it fits fine in a, in a standard one. All right, and we're going to go on to um, Jay Brothwick's question. You are great. Thank you so much, 444RR, for covering my questions in great detail. I am now checking out some other tables, as you suggested. I have another question. I hope you do not mind. And by the way, Jay, of course I do not mind. I love answering your all's questions. What was the first trick you ever performed, and do you still perform it now? And what is your favorite stage illusion? Okay, well, I got to find my first trick I ever... I actually have two tricks that I, that I did. Now, when I first got serious into magic, when I first started doing it, not as this like fun little little kid thing. I when I first started doing it and started doing real actual tricks, it was Sam the Bellhop. Uh, a friend of mine, a neighbor who I've known since elementary school, I went to school with her. Um, you know, she's she's my neighbor. She lives right down the street. Sent me a video of two uh, Bill Malone videos on YouTube. So she sent me some links, and one of them was Sam the Bellhop. And I was reading the comments to Sam the Bellhop, and people were talking about the the secret to it. And I'm like, I want to try that. So I got a deck of cards. It took me probably about eight hours straight of watching that video to learn the pattern. And I finally learned it, showed it to my family. They loved it. And that got me floored into magic. When I was a little, little kid, though, I got a magic set um, for Christmas when I was real little. Because I've always loved watching magic on TV. I think the first magic special I watched was a Penn and Teller special back in like 1993. And I loved magic ever since. And I always wanted to be a magician as a little kid though. Like I would have like um, my uh, grandmother got me a, uh, a plastic top hat and one of those cheap plastic magic wands and a cheap plastic cape. And I'd run around the house saying, I make you disappear. And I, I was as a little kid. Uh, but I got a magic set and in it was this trick right here. The ball and vase. This is the trick that I was probably the first trick I ever learned. And another trick I got when I was real little was the uh, magic coloring book. This guy. Uh, I got a different version of it though, but I, it's basically that, that guy. I started the 365 day magic challenge with the coloring book. And I thought it would be poetic to kind of end with the uh, ball and vase. So the very last video of the 365 day magic challenge will be... Spoiler alert, the ball and vase. So I thought it'd be kind of neat to end with one of my first tricks. So my first trick I ever learned was uh, the ball and vase. And you say, do I still perform it now? I don't. I don't perform the ball and vase now. It's, it's, a, it's a very easy beginner trick, but it's still a really, really great trick um, for anybody just starting out in magic, the ball and vase. But, but I do still perform Sam the Bellhop. So yes, I do perform this first trick I ever learned. So... But I, that's the first trick I ever learned when I was like, I think I got this trick when I was like six or seven. But the first trick I learned that got me really floored into doing magic as a career, or at least part-time career, was uh, performing Sam the Bellhop. And your other question is, what is your favorite stage illusion? Uh, I don't know what you mean by stage illusion. I don't know if you mean like kind of stuff they do like in Las Vegas where it's, you know, uh, and ladies going into boxes and changing into tigers or vanishing and reappearing in the audience somewhere. Or if you mean stuff that like you'd see a, a magician do for like a elementary school uh, assembly. If you mean like an elementary school assembly, I love doing this guy. And actually, it's probably would we'll work for a big Las Vegas stage illusion too is this guy, the nest of boxes. I love doing these. I do it as my closer to all my kids' shows and my stage shows. This is a really, really great trick. I love doing this one. Uh, another really good one is to do a straight jacket on the stage. That's a really good one, too, doing a straight jacket escape, because that is something that you don't see very often. And another one I love doing on stage, probably um, is a lot of magicians hate this trick, because they think you're just uh, not doing real magic is... The Vanishing Bandana. This guy. 
I love doing that one. It, everyone has a good time when they watch me do the trick because they laugh along because the, the company sends you a bandana instead of a banana. It's really, really fun. Uh, now, I did that for the Magic Challenge, so go watch that. Type in Vanishing Bandana, or Bandana, yes, Vanishing Bandana. So, uh, but if I had to say what is my favorite stage illusion, like Las Vegas, you know, uh, uh, Lance Burton kind of stage illusions, I really, really like the stage illusion where you have the lady go inside the box, and the magician disassembles the boxes, and they're in like four sections, and then he reassembles the boxes, but when he opens the doors to each box, uh, the lady's feet will be like up here, her head is down on the bottom, her torso is like in the second box. I like that one. I don't, I don't know the name of that trick, but I like that one. And I like the Blades of Death. That's the one where the magician goes inside of the big pyramid, and there's two steel spinning blades on the side, and there's a rope in the holding these blades together. The, uh, the assistant will light the, light the rope, these blades will come crashing into the box, and then the assistant walks back out on stage and takes off the cloak, and it's the magician. I love that one. That's a great one. All right. And the final question from Manny Quazetta. I got a special question for you. When you perform magic like someone tells you, can you make me a trick, and you don't have cards with you, what routines would you usually perform? Routines with no gimmicks. And also, what card routines will you use? Okay. That's the plethora of being a magician. You should always, always, always carry props around in your pockets with you when, when, it's, uh, when it's appropriate to do so. Like, I wouldn't go to a, uh, you know, like, I wouldn't go, like, working out in someone's farm and have cards and all your props in your pocket. But I will say you should always carry a deck of cards with you and some other maybe small tricks, like maybe one packet trick and some sponge balls. When I go out, even when I'm going to the grocery store or I'm going to like Walmart or something like that, I'll have a deck of cards in my pocket and I'll usually carry a, pot, a packet trick with me, something that I don't have to do with a table. That is because I've been in that same exact situation before. And I love that I've had my cards on me, but somebody has said, uh, this is what I did. Um, I, I did a fall festival last year and somebody came up to me and said, I remember you from the fall festival. Can you show me a trick? And, and I said, somebody say that. And I looked at had my cards on me, and I did a quick card trick for them. Uh, they, they, were at, they were at another restaurant, and they walked over to my table. And they, and I, was at a, I think I was at Outback or Applebee's, something like that. And they, and they said, do a card trick for me. And I'm like, all right, all right. And I had my cards on me. Now, if you don't carry your cards on you, which you should, you should carry a deck of cards on you, and you should carry uh, – I carry sponge balls a lot of times, too, because they're quick and easy. You can do that. If you don't have that on you, do some interactive magic tricks. Know some interactive magic tricks or something that you can have them do, such as the gray elephant in Denmark trick. If you go back to my 365-day magic challenge video where I did the gray elephants in Denmark trick, um, all you have to do is remember those steps. If you remember the steps, it always comes out to be gray elephants in Denmark. If you remember the steps, you can pull that out at any time and you can fool somebody with that. But I do recommend having your deck of cards with you at all times. If you don't want to carry sponge balls and packet tricks and, you know, all that in your pockets, at least have one deck of cards because there's a lot of routines you can do with one deck of cards. You can learn a lot of great ones that don't require any props or any special decks. All you do is you bust them out and you blow people's minds. The best one, and I've talked about it every week on Magician 101 because it always seems to come up, Chris Ballinger's Forced Outcome. That is a really, really awesome trick that you can bust out. It requires no gimmicks. It requires no special deck of cards. It can be done with a borrowed deck of cards. It's completely impromptu. So I love Chris Ballinger's Forced Outcome. It's a great, great trick. All right, so I hope I answered your question enough, um, uh, Manny. So I would say, Manny, if you carry a deck of cards around with you, but if you don't have them with you, learn some interactive magic tricks, People, stuff that they can do. Uh, with, they, they need their mind for. So like the gray elephants in Denmark because everything's done in their mind with that trick. Uh, so that's the video for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed Magician 101. Make sure to submit your questions down below for next week and let me know what you guys think about the contest. Let me know if you guys would enter a contest if I had a magic contest with some really awesome magic prizes. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow for the next magic challenge or next magic challenge video next week for Magician 101. Bye everyone.